we will have to get repressive. That was his word, repressive. It has been a form of laissez-faire and laxity. Now we are paying the bill. Of course, the eighth suspect in the Paris attacks is still on the loose here in Belgium. They went and raided his apartment, arrested a couple of his uh, brothers, I believe, who were subsequently released, but he's still on the loose. And now the uh, prime minister of Belgium is saying they need to get repressive in the area of Molenbeek to clamp down on that jihadist sentiment. I mean, what an incredible statement. Could you hear that in Belgium, Paul Joseph Watson, that Biden clip from this morning uh, where he comes out and says that we've got to stay free, we've got to keep our borders open? No, we're free in the country, but we have borders. That's what a sovereign country does. It's why my body has skin. It's why I have a mucous membrane in my mouth. I have a border for a reason. My cells have a, have a barrier. Plants have a wall, not because they're racist, but because they'd die if they didn't, Paul Joseph Watson. Yeah, and of course, that echoes what Salon.com said the other day, which I talked about. They basically came out with a headline saying the answer to the Paris terror attacks is to invite more Muslim refugees into Paris. Again, absolutely ludicrous, makes no sense. And today, which you probably mentioned, there's a report out of Baton Rouge that they allowed some of these Syrian refugees into Baton Rouge, Louisiana. One of them's already escaped, missing completely. They don't know where he's gone. Yeah, it's the same in Germany. They get into these reg refugee registration centers and then just disappearing into the underground. So, of course, ISIS again came out with a promise the other day and said they would uh, infiltrate 4,000 jihadists through this refugee wave. And by the and way, they're Paul, doubling they've down been keeping their promises and now they're disappearing from refugee centers inside the United States. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Baton Rouge, one's gone missing already, the first wave that they took in. And of course, that's only going to happen to a greater extent. So the, the reaction in Paris, though, seems to be they're not really letting it affect their way of life. I mean, it was quite deserted on Sunday, but it's not like Israel-style oppressive security. You just walk straight into the train station, get on the train. There are no checks. There were armed police on the train. Dr. Group joins us for the balance of the sour to talk about solutions. We have them up every couple of weeks. We have been trying to launch this for the last year. We got all of the uh, organic ingredients to do it. And we've come up with a new living defense, harmful organism cleansing dietary supplement. And it is extremely affordable. It, it is brimming uh, with the capsules. And the way I read the facts, this could do a cleanse for really a family of four or five people. Dr. Group, let's just get into the product now and then into parasites themselves, what folks really want to hear about in the next segment. But thank you for developing this for InfoWarsLife.com. Tell us about Living Defense and why it's so special. Well, it's, it's really special because it's part of the problem that we're dealing with today. When the earth becomes sick and the earth soils become acidic and the internal bodies become acidic because of all the toxic food in the air and the beverages that people are consuming, it sets up an environment that's ripe for harmful organisms to live, either on the earth, that's why a lot of the plants are infested with harmful organisms, or inside the body. And years ago, we linked every single disease process to an overgrowth of organisms in the body. And when people hear the word parasite, which the FDA does not like us to use, they actually came down on us and, and made us take the word parasite off everywhere because we were exposing uh, what the globalists have been doing, spreading these parasites and creating this environment, which is great for them to live in for years and years and years because they know they drain us of energy, they make us sick. So we had to actually change the word parasite to harmful organism. And when we talk about harmful organisms, it's the definition, actually, the medical definition of parasite is any harmful organism that lives off of a host mechanism. Most people just think parasites are worms, but harmful organisms are bacteria, viruses that you can get through flu shots, funguses, yeast. We literally have an epidemic going on right now with molds and fungus and yeast living in everybody's body. This is something that I heard about over a decade ago. I didn't really believe. I did one of these cleanses. 
or, or invasive organism or harmful organism cleanses. It really hurt a lot, but it did do a lot. Uh, with this, this was not painful like some other cleanses I've done. The product is available at InfoWarsLife.com. I've always read and heard that just one of the ingredients, uh, black walnuts, uh, you know, is really uh, good at flushing parasites and that, you know, animals out in the fields eat them and stuff to naturally do this. We do cleanses on our dogs, our cats, our horses, our cows. Why not us? Well, because they don't want you to know about that you need to do a, a parasite or a harmful organism cleanse. That's the thing. It's so secretive. And when we were doing our research into the root cause of every single disease, uh, there's been plenty of proof. The statistics are clear. Nine out of 10 people are infested with harmful organisms like parasites. Parasites can be transmitted by people, pets, food, and the environment, and so many other sources. Once parasites have made it inside your body, they steal your nutrients and release toxic waste. They use the bathroom inside of you. It's time to start eliminating toxic and harmful organisms from your body. Introducing Living Defense, the new harmful organism cleanser by InfoWarsLife.com. Living Defense uses wild-crafted organic herbs to help naturally cleanse harmful organisms from the body. We are expected to sell out of this very, very quickly. This is our limited first-time run. So visit InfoWarsLife.com today to try Living Defense today while supplies last. Shifting gears to Dr. Steve Pachenik of StevePachenik.com. We're going to find out his view on what's happening geopolitically in the world and what these Friday the 13th attacks mean. StevePachenik.com. He's an MD and a PhD and, of course, uh, been involved in many of the more famous black ops operations and many operations you never heard about. So he's uniquely suited to give us his take and, and his inside view uh, on what's happening. So, uh, Steve Pachenik, thank you for coming on, Doc. Oh, it's always a pleasure coming on, and it's always a pleasure to hear Stephen Quayle's voice. I haven't heard it in years. I, I worked with him in Montana, so it's quite an interesting family we have here. Uh, basically, from my point of view, in, in running a hostage negotiation, about the first time I started the first hostage negotiation in Washington, D.C. in 78, it was with the Hanafi Muslims, black Muslims, and uh, they also protested the appearance of um, a movie about Mohammed, and they asked to shut it down. They also killed quite a few people on three different sites. We had five to 500 hostages, and I was brought in because the FBI couldn't handle it, the CIA couldn't handle it, and the military was not available. The point of fact is that I was able to negotiate their release. Some 40 years later, we have the same problem. The problem isn't just black uh, Muslims, because uh, Muslims is a wide-ranging uh, uh, factor. We have uh, Muslims in Indonesia, we have Muslims in Malaysia, and Shiite Muslims. What we're talking about here is specifically the Sunnis and ISIS. And ISIS, from my point of view, came into France for reasons other than uh, their dislike of Christianity or anything to do with the Quran. From my point of view, one of the issues that I was concerned about and was true to form because I predicted there would be Algerians and Pakistani control operatives, and it turned out to be correct that the people involved in the, in the attacks were either the sons of Algerians or the Algerians themselves. Now, why Algerians? Because for uh, over 30, 40, 50 years, the French have incarcerated over 2 million Algerians in their camps, in their internment camps, both in Paris, in France, around my area, in Toulouse, and in Algeria. And what's happened, in effect, contrary to the image of a sweet, uh, innocent, beatific France, and I'm not saying that France deserves it, I'm simply stating a fact which no one stated either in France or the United States and none of our intelligence operations. Sure, they got thrown out of Algeria in the battle for Algiers. Correct. But no one knows to what degree it really occurred. When I grew up in France, in the southwest of France, in Toulouse, I was privy to explosions all day long. And the explosions were created either by Algerian operatives or created by the generals who were fighting against the goal. And the famous film, The Jackal, shows you exactly to what extent people wanted to go to kill Charles de Gaulle because they were uh, uh, disgusted in France with the fact that they had to pull out of Algeria. The converse of that is that these are the, uh, the people involved in these attacks against France, Belgium, Spain, and, 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 and Lebanon are the children of the children who were in the Algerian War and the Moroccan Wars in the, in the wars involving the colonial empires. 
So under the guise of the Quran or Islamism, extreme Islamism, which most of them don't really know, None of them have really been students of the Quran. They don't know Islam, and I'm not pardoning them. I'm simply saying that they came in to justify the revenge that they were that they were told to inflict by the, their fathers, their grandfathers, which in fact said, "Listen, France has been terrible to our people in Algeria, here in France, and elsewhere. It's not an accident that they came out of Belgium." Belgium knew very well that there was a uh, nidus or a group of operatives who were extreme Islamists in this town called Milcom. It's a town which is in the suburbs. I don't know it as well as I know France. Our reporters but, are there right now. Okay. Well, what, the reason why Belgium is important, and we, you and I actually talked about it many years ago, is that Belgium, ironically, is not a unified nation. Although it has the audacity to take over the EU, as the center point, Belgium itself is broken up into the Flems, the Walloons, French, uh, uh, Flemish, and other cultures. And they had a very high, hard time for years getting a prime minister or a leader of that country. So, in fact, it's very easy for an extremist of any type to go into Belgium and then travel across the border one hour later into France. I don't think this is a stand down. I don't think this is a false flag. But I, what I do want to encourage our audience to understand is we have to take it easy. It's not a question that we are on a high alert and we're on a war on terror. Terror is a strategic and tactical uh, mechanism which is intended to create fear. And no one feeds into that fear better than our American media and the world media, where they amp it up to an amazing volume, and then you would think you're totally paralyzed. The truth of the matter is we've had terrorism from the beginning of time. We were terrorists in the Revolutionary War against the British. The French were terrorists. So it's a technique that's being developed. Is our intelligence and our FBI and our military uh, up to the, uh, the level that it needs to in penetrate uh, these groups? My opinion, quite frankly, is no. And for years, we have wasted a lot of money, trillions of dollars in the wars in Iraq sure. and Afghanistan. We have not won anything. We basically have wasted that war, wasted our capital. And bombing these uh, groups and ISIS is totally useless. Well, that's it's where I wanted to go next. Uh, it's very confusing, the situation in Syria. Uh, it's been pretty clear up until the last few months who was on whose side. The West was backing a lot of these ISIS and al-Qaeda, al-Nusra groups. Now it appears they might actually be cutting them off and bombing them. Is that because they didn't serve their purpose successfully? Or is it because they become an embarrassment? Is it because Putin came in? Or is it still a fake war? Did ISIS strike back through these uh, North African groups uh, as a threat to France for bombing them? I mean, as best you can tell them from your sources, how is this really connected to Syria? Uh, this is very much connected to Syria because, number one, everyone has to understand that Bashar Assad and the Assad or the Alawites, these are the minority groups of Shiites, were placed into power from the, from the internal part of Syria um, right to the Mediterranean and basically on Aleppo and Latakia. I was there in Syria. So the French created modern-day Syria. The second thing is the Shiites, i.e. the Iranian Revolutionary Guard led by General Soleimani, the Russians, and the most importantly are the Hezbollahs, 8,000 young men from Lebanon who literally go 10 minutes away and fight ISIS. The truth of the matter is that the only vigil and the only effective counterforce that we have against ISIS is not America, it's not the bombing, it's primarily the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, the Bashar's forces, military forces that are supported by the Russians, and the Hezbollah young men and women who've been fighting ISIS for well over four to five years in Lebanon, because literally ISIS is sure. outside their homes. So, we so how are things going for ISIS? And now the French claim they're going to send the French Foreign Legion into there. Well, I would say the following. I know the French Foreign Legion because they were trained in the town where my family grew up in, in uh, Corsica. The French Foreign Legion is technically not part of the French army. They are, in my opinion, one of the most ruthless, effective forces uh, in the other world because they are not part of the French army. If, if Hollande were to tell me it's the French army, I would not have the same opinion because my father was in the French army. They were defeated in World War II. They were defeated in World War I. However, the French Foreign Legion 
brings in Germans, Austrians, and all types of criminals who want to have a French passport. They're exceedingly effective at what they do as 